Thank you very much, uh, colleagues, ambassadors, friends. Thank you to United Nations Watch and to the Permanent Mission of Honduras, to the United Nations for hosting today's event. It's always a pleasure to speak on a panel with my team colleagues, Irwin, Diego, Maria Corina, Ambassador Flores, uh, I Haleo. I'm glad to be joining you. The track record of the Venezuelan regime is well established. Murder, judicial executions, arbitrary detentions and forced disappearances, torture, rape and other forces of sexual violence. While the scale persecution and the forced displacement of millions of its citizens. These are the tools used by the regime in Venezuela. Member of the United Nations Human Rights Council to maintain power and social control over its population. Basic rights and fundamental freedoms have been stripped away, leaving citizens defenseless. Grand corruption and gross mismanagement by the regime has created a humanitarian crisis of unprecedented scale in our hemisphere. More than five million Venezuelans forcibly displaced from their homes, whether running for their lives as political exiles or in search of the most basic necessities for survival because their government has stolen their prosperity and left them without access to medicines, basic health care or even food. We may never know the full toll this regime has taken on its citizens. Countless Venezuelans have lost their lives because they could not access basic health care or shelter or running water. Add to this the cost of a lost generation of youth whose development has been forever harmed by malnutrition and lack of access to education. All the while, those in power continue to amass personal wealth through grand corruption schemes, siphoning off wealth that should have been used for the Venezuelan people and profiting off the very programs intended to provide humanitarian assistance to their citizens. At the OES, we have long been concerned with the deterioration that has taken place in Venezuela. A decade ago, its conditions were not altogether unique in the region. Yes, there were human rights challenges. Yes, there were issues with corruption. But the quality of life for those living in the country was not dramatically outside the norm. This collapse was as deliberate as it was steady. When the regime lost the hearts and the minds of the people, it resorted to increasingly authoritarian practices, independent democratic institutions were co-opted, corrupted and dismantled in order to consolidate power in the hands of the regime. The military had to be owned, its loyalty bought and paid for, first through bribes, payouts and shared control over state resources and assets, and then by making them complicit in the crimes of the regime culpable of, for, for the perpetration of human, gross human rights violations and crimes against humanity against the Venezuelan people. It also makes a peaceful and democratic solution more complicated as those with the most power to bring out about positive change have been incentivized to prevent change at all costs. The abuses carried out by the regime in Venezuela are well documented. In 2016, I fulfilled my duties as Secretary General the organization and invoked the Inter-American Democratic Charter. Between 2016 and 17, I produced a series of reports documenting the deterioration of democracy, the alteration of the constitutional order and the corruption of the regime that has fostered the humanitarian crisis that exists today. At this stage, there was little discussion of the situation in Venezuela outside the region. When the protests in the spring of 2017 demonstrated an increasingly violent and systematized pattern of abuses, it became apparent that we had to do more. With the democratic institutions captured and the rule of law all but eliminated, we, need, we needed to seek justice on the international stage. The, this is why in 2017, with the assistance of former ICC prosecutor Luis Moreno Campo, we established the OAS Independent Panel of Experts. It will be here part of it and created a new process at the regional level to look into the issue of crimes against humanity in Venezuela. 
when in 2018 the independent panel found reasonable ground to believe that crimes against humanity had been perpetrated, we had one recourse to engage the International Criminal Court and call for them to open a full investigation into the situation. In the time since, the abuses have only increased in scale and intensity. The Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights expressed similar concerns in four reports produced in 2017, 2018, 2019, and most recently in 2020. These findings were again echoed in the September 2020 report of the United Nations Independent Fact Mission, Finding Mission, who also found that crimes against humanity have been perpetrated. The figures documented are outstanding, more than 18,000 extrajudicial executions, hundreds of instances of enforced disappearances, and hundreds of documented cases of torture. These are just what has been documented in a country that has criminalized the sharing of information that reflects negatively on the regime. Despite the obvious crisis, the International Criminal Court is still pending to act, and then we expect the, in the future uh, a stronger action against this regime and act to act in order to stop these crimes against humanity. The OES Permanent Council has also taken a leading role in seeking peaceful restoration of the constitutional and democratic order in the country and has passed eight resolutions addressing situations of concern. In the wake of the overtly fraudulent presidential elections at the end of 2018, the OAS Permanent Council refused to recognize the legitimacy of Maduro's second term in June of that year. Moreover, the, the OAS General Assembly of 2018 voted to recognize the interim government as a legitimate authority in the country and in turn recognized the body as a legitimate representative of Venezuela at the OAS. The OES has also tried to address the migration crisis through the creation of the working group to address the regional crisis caused by the Venezuelan migrants. Further, we are looking into the question of accountability. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the United Nations Human Rights Council, a council that was created as a beacon of hope that every individual around the world would be able to live their lives freely free to choose how they want to live, free from coercion and without threat to their lives and safety. The Council was created with one singular purpose, the promotion and protection of human rights around the world. Its membership obligations are laid out clearly. The very purpose of a seat on the, on the Council is to champion and end to ensure accountability for human rights abuses taking place with its greatest tools being its investigative and fact-finding powers that documented and shed the light of truth on many dark situations. It is a mockery of this principle. It is a mockery to the victims. It is a mockery to those that have been tortured, to those, uh, the relatives of those who have been extrajudicially executed, to have the regime sitting in the Human Rights Council. Diplomats and political appointees sit around tables in Geneva talking about the importance of human rights. Their colleagues back in Venezuela are perpetrating torture, boleito, ramo verde, helicoide. Faithfully named Operaciones de Liberación del Pueblo, Operaciones de Liberación Humanista del Pueblo, carry out extrajudicial executions against those perceived as a threat. They are terrorizing the families of anyone who dares to speak up. The only threat in Venezuela is the threat posed by the authoritarian regime against its own people. These are individuals claiming to be human rights champions on the international stage and are some of the worst offenders within their borders. The Human Rights Council was created to prevent large-scale abuses from taking place. It was not created as a resting place for perpetrators or a shield for human rights abusers. Yet, when Venezuela sought out this chair, this is exactly what it was looking for. Their presence is an affront to the, what the founders of the United Nations system envisioned. The pursuit of just justice for the Venezuelan people has been a long and arduous road. And any opportunity for recourse within its border has been 
all but eliminated. At the regional level, we have been seized with the crisis and actively pursuing a peaceful path to restore democratic and constitutional order. For ends that, all, that fall outside our mandate, we have sought support and assistance from the international community. We should not be alone in this, nor should we be the loudest voice. The loudest voice demanding an end to the abuse and justice for its victim should be coming from the members sitting on the Human Rights Council, from the countries that hold the privileged position of acting as a voice and champion to the fundamental rights and freedom of all people. Listen, listen to the victims. Listen to the relatives of those that have been murdered. Listen to those that have been tortured. Listen to those voices. Listen to the voice of those that have disappeared. Listen to those, the voices of those that have been killed. Otras voces cantan. Thank you.